Hello. Today we'll be folding this hyperbolic parabola. It was a design exercise from the Bauhaus Design School taught by Joseph Albers to his students to experiment with form and structure using a piece of material to transform it and to see what is possible. This is very simple. You can make more complex ones by increasing the number of divisions. I will show you that at the end. To start, you need a piece of square paper, and um, this one is 25 centimeters or um, 10 inches. We'll start by folding one corner to the opposing corner. Making a strong crease using your fingernails or a bone folder or some other kind of tool. And next, we'll fold this corner to this corner and make another strong crease. I'm showing you a fast way to fold this model. If you would like to fold it more precisely, there are some other good instructions on YouTube for making a more precise version. So we'll turn it so we get a pyramid. Now, one side of your pyramid will have two flaps. We'll fold one of these flaps over and make a tiny little pinch at the bottom. Just a little pinch to mark the center of the paper. So you see there's a little mark. Next, we'll fold the top of the pyramid down to touch that mark and we'll fold through the center. It's a lot of paper so it's important to make strong creases because when we unfold it at the end that will make all of our lines. So it will look like this. We'll unfold. So the next step is to fold the bottom edge up to meet the middle We'll fold all of these layers, which requires a little, little bit of effort. And we get something that looks a bit like a boat. We'll make a nice strong crease. So we get this shape. And we can fold to the top of the pyramid to touch the middle like this. Unfold. You can see we have three horizontal lines running across the center of the pyramid. So we'll flip the paper over. Now we can see that they're mountain folds. What we're going to do now is fold the bottom edge of the pyramid up to meet this first line that we made. A little tricky with all of this paper. It doesn't have to be precisely accurate because when we unfold this it's very forgiving of a little inaccuracy. So what we're going to do now, basically we're making a concertina folding of this shape and so we folded all of the zigs and now we're going to fold all the zags to make a zigzag shape. So what we'll do is we'll line this up on top of what we've already folded We'll fold the next line over to touch. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, this is okay. You can see that mine's not perfect, it's no problem. Okay, so we get this. Next we'll fold the next line. And then last we'll fold the tip. So we get this is zigzag shape. We'll put it on the table and make a few good passes here to try to press the lines down as much as possible. Right, and we'll unfold. And we get a pyramid with some lines. 
or unfold again. Make it a bigger pyramid. Then very carefully we'll separate the two layers. And if you folded it really well, they might stick a little, and that's okay, just be careful not to tear the paper. So we get this square shape with a whole lot of lines. Okay, so what we're going to do with this, two of these sides are folded the same, and then two of the sides are the opposite. And what we want to make is a series of concentric squares alternating mountain folds, valley folds, mountain folds, valley folds, all the way into the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a side where there's already a mountain fold, like this one. So this is good. This is folded the way we want it to be. So we'll come to the corner, and this model will become all corners, and so the sides will contract into the middle. So what we'll do is we'll come to the corner, we'll pinch the corner to make sure there's a nice crease there, then we need to change the orientation of this fold from a valley fold to a mountain fold. And we do that by finding the crease and changing its direction. And if you've made a good strong crease, this would be much easier, and that's why we did that the earlier step. So now you see we have a mountain fold and another mountain fold. We come to this corner, there's already a mountain fold here, so we bring them together. You pinch the corner, and then that's good. Continue along. This one needs to change, so we change this one as well. This is a nice stiff paper from Germany, so it's squeaking a little bit on the tape. A good stiff paper is nice for this model because it makes it uh, more springy, and the model behaves better. A soft paper is not a very good choice. So you'll see, we've made a mountain fold all the way around. And now the next fold needs to be a valley fold. So you can see here there's already a valley fold. So this is good. I can bring it together. And this next one needs to be changed to be a valley fold. So I can pinch the corner, which helps to bring the sides together. I can pinch the corner here too. And by pulling the paper a little bit, I can push down the valley and just sort of pinch it uh, where the existing line already is. So you can see I've pinched it and turned it into a valley fold. In my mind, that's the easiest way to do this. So we continue. This side's already good. So we'll bring those together. This one also needs to be changed so I can run my finger through it so it changes a little, pinch the corners. So you can see what I'm actually doing is I'm squeezing this paper on the back. Right, so that's another row done. And we're going to continue the same process alternating between mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. As you go in towards the middle, this process becomes easier because folding the corners helps to make all of the layers come together. And you want to do them one layer at a time going into the middle, not just one corner at a time, otherwise you'll have problems. As you get into the center, it becomes smaller and smaller. And I'm just changing these folds. The smaller they are, the easier they are to change. And I come to the last one, which is a little square in the center of the paper. 
And it's okay to just leave this one as a square. It doesn't need to be collapsed or folded any further. This is okay. We don't have to go any further than this. So what we'll do, we're going to pinch these four long corners and make sure we have nice, good, strong creases here, squeezing them together. And you can hold it with the top of the square facing up. Hold two sides. And we're going to bend it a little bit like closing some scissors. We're closing it, and that makes it take on a kind of scissor-shaped appearance. So we get the two parts together. I'll show you again. We've got this. And we're folding it so the scissors come together. I did it this way. So we get this sort of V-shape. And what we'll do is we'll pick one edge of the paper here and one that's on the opposite side, so opposed from each other. And we gently pull the paper apart. You want to be careful to separate all of these layers so you can actually see all of the corrugations. If it's stuck together in one part like this, it won't work. So you have to gently pull it apart. And you can see it makes this complicated shape. Not only that, but this shape can reverse and switch directions. If you have more than one of these, you can connect them together and make large, complicated star shapes and other types of polyhedrons. Thanks, and I hope you've enjoyed folding this hyperbolic parabola.